Hey guys, Crossfit Junction again, and today uh, I'm bringing you another review, and this time it's another Hornby uh, Loco. It is a HST, uh, the Sir Kenneth Grange one, the GWR Class 43 HST, first and last set to celebrate 40 years of the HST. Um, as you can see, it's the power car and the dummy car um, there's not much to it on this box apart from over here there's the uh, product code which is R3770 and as I said before GW GWR class 43 HST first and last and then on the back of the box we've got the brief history which is quite a lot this time round, I can see a hair just there. Um, yeah, it's kind of hard to pause it. So if you want to read that, feel free to pause it. There you go. Um, basically, yeah, um, this was on the GWR route. Um, I did see it once, I, once or twice. Same as the other intercity livery, the intercity swallow livery. Um, this one was to celebrate the 40, year, 40 years of the HST, and then this one was to just go with it, I believe. Um, driver Brian Cooper, which it says just there. If the camera picks it up. There we go. Um, so, yeah, as you can see, it's by Hornby without no guesses um so without further ado let's get inside the box just before we get into the box don't forget to smash the subscribe button so you can stay tuned for more videos in the future uh, i do upload every wednesday and saturday so without further ado uh, let's get into the box now so if we it's the older hornby uh, polystyrene box which it's not great but you know it does the job um, as you can see got this uh, tested at derails and I bought it from derails um, and it was tested by little Dan which is the owner I believe um, I will put a link in the description to the website if you want to buy a HST um, so feel free there uh, as always you get the owner's manual your general uh, routine maintenance your DCC ready running hints all stuff like that usually 30 minutes in each direction um, where to lubricate how to take the body off uh, the DCC sound and DCC chip pin um, it is one of the units is a pain in the absolute neck to fit sound to, which I have done to one uh, pair. So that's your normal stuff you get. Um, there's no detail pack in this, which you can kind of expect, apart from maybe the nub. I'm guessing that's knuckle couplers, yeah. Um, you also get nameplates, but I have fitted them etched nameplates. Um, they were nice. They weren't too difficult to apply because I know some uh, etched nameplates can be a pain in the neck because the body panels, are, like the Class 66 where it's corrugated, it's a pain. So uh, let's move on to the Loco. So here it is. As you can see, it is very glossy. It is the most glossiest train I've seen. Um, it's my most favourite one as well because um, it is in a superb livery. Um, as again, uh, same as the Class 158 review I did. Because it's in the gloss finish, you've got to be careful with greasy fingers and all that because it will leave a fingerprint. It is packed with detail and the weight of it is superb. So if we take a closer look, there's a bit of dust there. Um, there's a sticker, Sir, not sticker, an etch nameplate, sorry. Uh, Sir Kenneth Grange, and the print is superb. 
it is very very crisp um, if we move along we've got some more details down here some gauges the doors do open as you can see I don't know why but it's a nice little touch from Hornby the doors do open both sides and on the dummy car as well the dummy car is exactly the same as this just a different livery so I won't spend too long on that um, if we come underneath you can kind of see the rivets or when uh, I'm guessing bolts would be on the real loco um, there's a number there the loco number I believe or the unit number 253001 um, as you can see we've got the horn at the front with the grill which is really nice and then the lighting uh, we've got a window wiper the finish that stripe going all the way along is really crisp along here as well um, we've got some nice glazed windows on the front there it's no um, yeah as you can see in there there is cab detail I'll try and focus it for you. There's a two chairs. It's kind of hard to see the panels. The little vault. There we go. You can kind of see a little bit down there. All the gauges. Um, I do like where the uh, front hair is all blacked out with the black bit. That's really nice. Um, I have tested this once, I believe, uh, on the low on the layout with a twelve volt battery. Just a little bit backwards and forwards on a bit of test track, um, and it does run really well. You can barely hear the loco. Um, and again, the other side we've got the nameplate, Sir Kenneth Grange. Uh, we've got a number here, W43002. I'm not sure what that is. Put that down in the comments if you do. Uh, I'm not sure what this bit is here, but it's part of the paint finish. You can't really see it that well, but it does. You can kind of see it on the side, you can't, but obviously with the light like this, you can, which is a shame. Um, this is what I was on about. You, you can kind of see from a certain angle through the grill. See, this is a Hornby Premium Loco, whereas a Class 66 is a budget and it's all moulded. All of this is uh, separately fitted as well, I think, or finely done. The grill's up here. That's all superb. Uh, we've got another etch nameplate or uh, number plate here. Try and focus it for you. 40 years. It's nice. As you can see, we've got a separately fitted handrail here. And exactly the same near the cab, both sides. Separately fitted handrails there in white. Uh, we've got this white line, and it's, as you can see, just there. Going around the blue and look a grey colour. That's very uh, crisp. There's no bits that stick out where it's errored um, as you can see on the window as well that's nicely done we've got I believe it's silver outline around it going out around the outside that's nicely done um, we've got this orange stripe along the top as well uh, that's nicely done if my camera wants to focus thank you uh, we've got where the door would slide along here as well and door handles and the guard sign that's all nice we've got a live overhead wire sticker there um, if we move along to the back some not, not much detail here um, we've got the loco information panel like how much it weighs and how long it is what and how uh, tall it is stuff like that uh, again we've got more overhead wires Warning stickers, same again here, the information panel bit. And then we're back to the other side. There's that uh, 
number again, W43002. Uh, what does that say? Load 22 tons, evenly distributed. I'm guessing that's 22 tons on this bogey and 22 tons on this bogey. Um, I'm presuming. If we move along to the top, before we go to the underframe detail, we've got this nice exhaust. Shame it's not any holes in, so you could fit a smoke generator maybe. But to be honest, you won't be able to fit one because it's like a chunk along here. Um, it's, it's like a cast metal and then the motor sits in between it with like a flywheel each side so this can definitely pull a full HST with 10 cars and a dummy car to make a 11 car HST altogether um, there's a the grill again same as the other side and on top um, We've got some nice, I'm guessing that's moulded on the roof here, the panels to access the engine. We've got some uh, etched grills here as well, where the fan is. You can kind of see the fan slightly. Um, it is a red fan, but it doesn't show up on the camera that well. I do apologise about that. Uh, I'm not sure what that is. I'm not sure if it's to do with the AC or not. But it looks separately fitted, which is always good. Just got to be careful though. As you can see, there's loads of rivets towards this end where the uh, exhaust is. All round here. And a little bit on this little panel here. If it wants to focus. And as you can see from this little bit here, it is super shiny, like I said before. So just take care in handling it if you've got greasy fingers. Uh, now we move on to the underframe detail. As you can see, it is absolutely packed with separately fit details. Uh, all the pipe work under here. That's all separately fitted. And on the bogies, we've got brake discs or what meant to look like brake discs, which is nice. Um... We've got the step ladders to the cab. Um, I'm presuming that's your fuel tank there. Um, trying to get a good angle with the light in so you can see the under frame detail. Um, pretty much the same on this one. You've got your steps up to the loco there. Um, you've got your axle boxes here and here. Uh, you got your suspension there, just for the loco, which is, I was wondering where it was for a bit then. Um, it's basically the same on the other side, if I flip it over, apart from there is no detail in this compartment here, unlike the other side, as you can see. Um, there is still separately fitted details here. Uh, there's... I believe that's a separately fitted pipe going along here as well. Um, that looks like your fuel tank again, where you'd undo it. Um, again, you've got your steps, your axle boxes, your suspension just there. If it wants to focus, just there, kind of tucked away. Um, and then again, on this bogey, as you can see, it's quite full with detail, which is good. Um, and that's basically the HST if we move on to the other car the dummy car if I get that um, it's in the normal GWR livery uh, if I move this one out of the way you can see this one there uh, here we go um, as I said you can see through the grill which I absolutely love from Hornby it's a great touch. Uh, we've got our etch nameplate, uh, driver, driver Stan Martin, twenty uh, fifth of June, nineteen fifty to sixth of November, two thousand and four. And then on the other side, we've got a different nameplate, which is driver Brian Cooper, fifteenth of June, nineteen forty seven to 
the 5th of October 1999. Uh, as you can see, it's, it's uh, if I want to get my words out, um, it's exactly the same. It's just a different livery. So um, we've got the GWR sign there. We've got the loco number there, 43198. Uh, again, we've got these uh, di details here. Uh, the underframe details are exactly the same, so I don't really need to show you in depth again. Uh, same detail there, load 22 tons. Is it 22 tons or 2.2 tons? Can't quite see. If it wants to focus. Ah, 2.2 2 tons. I was going to say, 22 tons is quite a lot of weight. Um, again, we've got the silver outline and on the window there. Uh, we've got separately fitted handrails on the side, here and here. Uh, the doors do open on here as well. Um, I do like the GWR livery with the silver right in. Looks nice. As you can see, there is a bit of dust on here. Uh, we've got overhead wire stickers again, the warning stickers. Uh, if we move around to the other side, it's exactly the same. Got a number there. Um, this side, it doesn't have the blacked out uh, lights like on the other unit, but still looks nice. And it is gloss again, so it's always nice. Just take care again, like I said. Um, as you can see, it's we've got the yellow ends, which I do like. Quite iconic with the GWR livery now. Um, exactly the same on the roof. We've got the etched grills here. And then the exhausts. Um, we've got our etched nameplates, which is quite easy to apply. I, Me personally, I apply my uh, etched nameplates with PVA glue. Um, just put a very, very small amount on here enough to cover it um, and then where it takes quite a while to dry it gives you time to play around and if you get it on wrong it's not harsh on the paint so once it dries if you're very careful just get like a toothpick or something take the excess PVA away uh, because I know when I was younger I absolutely did the wrong thing and I used poly cement which is to bond plastic to plastic, not metal to metal. And because it was poly cement, it would always dribble down the side. And yeah, I learnt my lesson the hard way. So don't do it that way. Um, exactly the same as the other end on the other unit. We've got our overhead wire stickers, the warning, and then the loco information bit. I don't know if we can read this or not. I'll try and zoom in for you guys. Um, it's kind of readable, but not really, so zoom back out for you. Um, so, um, yeah, it's got the cab detail the same. I'll try and show you, obviously. You can see it in there. If I try and open the door... There you go, you can see that opens as well. Um, it's all there, it's just kind of hard to see. As you can see, I've got a fingerprint on the window, which doesn't help. Um, I do apologise about that. You can see some of the bits in there now. Like that accelerator, just there. And then the other side... I believe is the brake, I think. And then I've got the dials on the uh, dashboard there. Can cars please go away? Thank you. Um, yeah, as you can see, this is the dummy, so you can see through the grill, whereas the other unit is the power car, so you can't really see through it. Um, so, um, yeah, that's basically all there is to the HST. Uh, if I get the other one into shot as well. 
Um, I do have another two of these, I believe. Yeah, so I've got three HSTs, which is six units altogether. Um, one unit is DCC'd, and all the others is just analog, like this one. Um, the run and performance for it, it is really nice. Um, I'll put a clip in of it running now. So as you saw in that video, it wasn't this unit itself, but it's got the exact, exactly the same motor. So it does run exactly the same, and I have seen this run personally. Um, it is very smooth. Um, the value for money. Um, this is where it gets a bit. I'm in an RN. This loco, these two, uh, well, this is the loco, I would say, because it's got the motor in and the dummy. Um, for the two of them, it is £260 for just the two. Um, is it worth it? Personally, I would say yes. But that's because I'm a massive HST fan and I absolutely love them. I'm a, You can say I'm a fanboy of them. Um, but the value for money, as you can see on the underframe detail, it is brimmed with separately fitted detail you've got to be very careful how you pick it up because it can fall off the cab detail is all there um as you can see it's all it's got a gloss finish and if this was in a matte finish you would have to send it away if you wanted that and that could be 50 pounds per unit so you think that's 100 pounds that could be if you wanted it personally glossed um so having it in a gloss finish is really nice. Um, the running performance is there, so the value for money is good. If you're willing to pay £260, go for it. It is a good investment, I'd say. Um, but if not, um, you could, there, I, um, yeah, Hornby did release a cheaper version of this which is kind of, I think it's like £120, but uh, all the underframe detail, I believe, is moulded. So there is a bit of difference there. Uh, the packaging. The packaging is the normal Hornby styrofoam style box, which I do not like, but it's basically what, you got to get really i guess from hornby because they don't really want to do the ice block packaging um so for packaging i would give that a mm, i'd say a five out of ten because it's the old style and taking it in and out of the uh, polystyrene it can damage the loco especially with this much detail as you can see when I pick it up all the separately fitted detail on the underneath that um, the value for money I didn't do that um, the value for money from my opinion I would give it a 9 personally because I love HSTs the details there the run and performance um, if, like the gloss finish the run and performance I'd give it a 9.5 because it has got a really really good hauling capacity because the weight of this loco it is unreal um when it is running because of the weight of this loco if there is any small uh like when you join the track together if there is a small gap it does sound really nice, which personally I like. I know some people don't, um, that I do. So I guess that's a good thing. Um, run and performance, like I said, I'll give it a 9.5. Overall for the Loco, I would give it a... Um, I'd give it an 8.5 out of 10. Simply because... 
it's all there. Even on a dummy loco, uh, the details there, the cab detail and all that. Um, I do have two sets of the Castle Class sets. The Mark 3s with the sliding doors. The Corvette. And then I've got a full rake uh, HST, which is eight, eight coaches, I believe. Um, I've got another two HSTs on order from this year. One is the Midland Pullman, which I believe was this year or the year before. It um, was on in like real life. And I've also got the First Great Western set that's coming out from Hornby this year. So I've got two new HSTs on order. Um, once I get them, I will review them. Um, Put down in the comments which one you want to see first, the Midland Pullman or the First Great Western blue ones. Um, obviously, I'm getting the coaches to go with them. So there'll be a 10 car HST. Uh, I believe the Midland Pullman is 9 car. So that will be a 11 car HST, which will look nice on the layout going over the viaduct. Um so yeah on that note thank you all for watching don't forget to smash the subscribe button the like button uh drop any comments to which one you want to see first the first great western or the midland pullman um i do have another two locos on order as well obviously uh the class 800 in lnr zoom livery and the Hornby Sentinel in Hitachi livery. So that's something to look forward to. If Don't forget to subscribe so you can stay tuned for more in the future. And uh, thank you all for watching. Peace out.